make sure I can see the preview. Sorry for all the you know housekeeping type setup stuff. Um, wanted to talk a little bit today about setting expectations, and that's another one of those topics that I'm going to revisit over and over and over again because it is absolutely vital um, that this is um, that this is clear. I mean. If as a bookkeeper, I'm expecting to do a certain amount of work because of conversations I've had with the client, but the client's expecting me to do something entirely different, then there's going to be conflict. There's going to be um, a lot of miscommunication. There's going to be some assumptions. There's going to be um, a, really a lot of conflict. If the, if the client's expecting me to do a whole year's worth of catch-up work in a week, but I have, by the way, that's never been my policy. Um, I was expecting to do, do it over 12 weeks because that's usually how we work things out in order to manage the workload better. Then the customer is going to be frustrated with me for not moving as quickly as um, they wanted me to. And I'm going to be frustrated with the client because it wasn't made clear to me. And many, many times when this happens, not only am I frustrated with the client for not being clear to me, but it's like we're having two completely separate conversations. Um, a lot of times it will feel like I'm talking to the client and I think I'm having conversation A, and uh, the client thinks we're having an entirely different conversation altogether. So the, the, the miscommunication just, just goes crazy. Um, so, one of the things that I really like to do is to talk to the client from the very beginning about exactly what your expectations are. And I'm going to kind of talk in this video about you know, as if you are the client. Uh, you may not be a client at all, you may be a bookkeeper, you may be trying to see what I'm doing in my business model, and all of that's fine. Um, but I'm, right now I'm going to speak you know, to clients. As the client, it's your responsibility to be very clear on what you're looking for. As the bookkeeper and as the business owner, my responsibility is to ask the right questions. And the reason I'm saying that is because many times clients don't even really understand what it is that they want. Um, bookkeeping and accounting is so... Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? It's it's so overwhelming to a lot of people that they don't actually know what the outcome that they're looking for is. So they don't know what expectations to set. So it becomes my responsibility to ask the right questions and the client's responsibility to answer those questions honestly. Um, one of the questions that I very frequently will ask is, do you have any hard deadlines coming up? One hard deadline that I am very aware of right now is six days from now, and that is tax day. Uh, this year it falls on April the 18th. And I'm always aware of the tax deadlines. So if someone were to call me today and say, I need you to get all of my stuff together and caught up in time for tax day, um, then, well then, I one, I know what their expectations are. They're expecting me to do um, probably 15 to 20 hours worth of work in six days and I'm probably going to say that's not going to happen by April 18th. I can get it ready for the October deadline. Now I, can I talk a lot about taxes? I do not do taxes myself. I don't like doing taxes. Um, but I am aware of deadlines. I'm aware of kind of, I have a general awareness of everything that's going on with the IRS so I know what they're going to be asking for, and I know when those deadlines are for you. Um, and if I know what those hard deadlines are, another another example of a hard deadline that has come up for me is a client was refinancing their home and needed to have financials in place for that, but they did not make it clear that 
we need all of this done in time for this refi, which is going to happen on this date. Um, they just kind of left it open. And I was doing I was doing a tremendous amount of work. They told us they had two accounts, they had seven, um, and they were all heavily used. And um, I was trying to keep up with them and several other clients. Um, lessons have been learned since then, by the way. And uh, wasn't really clear on how soon they needed this done. I could have put a little more time in and gotten it done, but they were not clear with me. They kept pushing it back and pushing it back instead of saying, look, we have to refi as of May 1st or whatever date it was. That's when we're having this meeting. So, you know, we need this done by May 1st. When I have a deadline, it's very easy to um, achieve that deadline. If if there's no deadline at all, um, then I just I have my own rate of work that uh, I do tell my clients about. But it may or may not be the same as what the client is expecting. Does that make sense? So as a client, if you're expecting me to work at a certain rate, um, a certain If you're expecting me to, to do things in a certain time frame, and it's critical that this that things happen in this time frame, then it's very important to communicate that. Uh, another thing that I will ask, and I will ask this every time, how many accounts do you have? By accounts, I'm referring to everything. Do you have bank accounts, credit uh, checking accounts, savings accounts? credit cards, mortgage accounts, um, what accounts, and, and I mean everything, I need to know everything. Do you have a loan for your business, a small business loan? Do you have um, uh, payroll? Do you have sales tax? And I have had clients um, tell me, or worse, tell my sales people, that, oh, I only have one checking, one savings, one credit card, which is what's covered in our basic package. And then um, we'll start digging and find out that they have one checking, one savings, 12 credit cards, two mortgages, a first mortgage and a second mortgage, and, and a small business loan, and we need to keep track of it all, and that's not covered in our basic package. That's, that's more than... <laughs> More work than, than is agreed upon. Um, that, that's that been kind of an ongoing problem. It's been uh, kind of a challenge to make sure that the client, if you're a client, you need to be very honest and open with your bookkeeper because you're entrusting us to make your financials correct. We're trusting you because we don't have anything to do with the IRS. Um, I just have an awareness of what they're looking for, what they will allow and what they won't. But I don't work for the IRS. I don't want to work for the IRS. Uh, want to even less with every passing year. I want to have as little to do with the Internal Revenue Service as I can. Um, I have a, a little cartoon with Joker that says, you know, I'll mess with Batman all day long, but the IRS? No! <laughs> even Joker won't mess with him. Um, So it's important. I mean, it's it's so important. I I cannot do the kind of work on a client's books that they usually expect me to do, which is very thorough, as detailed as need be, um, with all of the financial information there. If they're only giving me half the information, I am completely um, the the quality of the work that I can do depends one hundred percent on whether or not I receive the information that I'm asking for, all of it, in a timely manner. Um, and that's another topic I'm going to come back to over and over again. It's vital as a client, for you as the client, it is vital that, one, you share with me what your outcomes are. I can't fulfill them and I can't meet your expectations if I don't know what they are. And um, there's been many times that the client has assumed that I knew exactly what they meant. 
by by saying I think I, I bought this recently just to to be able to help me figure out what my clients want. This may be the only way that I know of to tell what my clients want. Um, what does my client want? I'm getting way too old. I don't like <laughs> I don't like my age. You may rely on it. That's what it says. Um, does my client want certain things done? Oh, you may rely on it. Okay. Don't make me resort to the magic eight ball. Um, so important. If you have I'm going to kind of go back to the hard deadlines a little bit. If you have hard deadlines, if you have specific needs that you know is coming up, um, like I said, a home purchase, refi a mortgage, taxes, um, an appointment with your accountant, uh, taking out a small business loan, buying insurance, buying a car, anything where you need the, your financials. You need to be very clear with your bookkeeper that these are coming up. These dates are coming up. These needs are coming up. And what it is. Um, and then you need to be responsive to your bookkeeper when she asks for more information. So if you say, look, I, I need uh, profit and loss for 2016 and the first quarter of 2017, and I need to show a profit because I'm buying a house, um, we may have to sit you down and say, you're not in profit. Here's the problem. But wouldn't you really rather find out a month before closing than to find out um, the hard way that you're not going to be able to qualify for whatever loan you're, you're taking out? Um, if, you're, if your goal is to expand your business versus being in compliance with the tax code, we need to know that. Um, it doesn't really quote unquote change the way we do your books. The information goes into the software and reports are generated either way. But if I'm aware that you're in a growth mode, um, then it's, it's not going to change the way I do, quote, do your bookkeeping. It will change the way I communicate with you. It will 100% change, you know, if, if you don't speak to me for six months and all of a sudden at the end of the year, um, and I, I have had many clients like this, you need your taxes done and so you freak out. Um, I'm going to kind of let that slide if I think you're just in, in tax compliance. If I know you're in a growth mode because we've had this conversation and I don't hear from you for six weeks, I'm going to be on the phone because if you're in growth, you need this information. You need it promptly. And you need to be, you know, communicating with me about um, things that I have questions about, about what, how your goals are changing, about whether or not you're looking to have a profit or a loss, um, about your balance sheet. And many times the balance sheet is the sticking point. Um, I mean, either in either case, I, I'm probably trying to reach you. I'm almost certainly trying to reach you. I reach out to my clients every week. But if I haven't heard from a growth client in a while, I'm going to be slightly more proactive about trying to make sure that um, I'm trying to express this without like throwing myself under the bus because it, I, I'm afraid it sounds like I don't care about my clients. I care very deeply. But again, it depends on what the client's outcomes are. If a client is in growth mode, more communication is required. They need to hear from me more often. They need to talk to me more often. If they're just worried about compliance and they're fine paying the minimum price to make sure their books are taken care of so they can file their taxes in January, I may have different goals for them, but there's nothing I can do about that. Um, I have had, like I said, I've had clients like that where I've reached out, reached out, reached out, reached out, you know, 
called, texted, emailed, and got crickets for months. And then, you know, April 1st, April Fools, I need all of this stuff done for my accountant's appointment in two days. And, you know, and that's the case, there's, there's no way I can say no because I've already been paid for the work that I haven't done. But it's frustrating to me because I do plan um, how to manage my time so that I can provide the best service to all of my clients. And so if I have to put 20 hours of work in on one client um, and I still have a 40 hour work week, it's, uh, it's possible and it's doable and I've done it many times and it's challenging. Uh, on the other hand, I just laugh and say I accomplish miracles for a living. So there you go. Um, setting expectations. If you are open with your bookkeeper, your bookkeeper should also be open with you. You should be hearing from her regularly. Uh, again, I'm going to keep pounding on this at least once a quarter. Once a month would be perfect. Once a quarter is the minimum. Um, if you're not hearing from her that often, you might want to, you know, find out why. It, it can be a little bit of a challenge because a lot of times clients will expect us to communicate with us. Um, but personally, I do most of my communication with my clients over email. And that's a little bit of a challenge because you can say things in email that can come across wrong. And we've all seen it happen. We've had it happen in text. We've had it happen in emails. Um, I just recently, in the last month or so, talked to received emails from a client, and I was just cringing. Didn't want to talk to him. And then he called me. And this was a client I hadn't met um, in person. Hadn't talked to him on the phone. I'd gotten him from, um, as, from a referral, so I hadn't even really talked to him. And... <clears throat> He was the sweetest guy. I mean, and he was very clear in what he was looking for. He answered all of my questions. I was expecting him to need an hour of my time, which I don't have this week, no matter how badly I want to have it, um, to review every transaction that he ever had, and he may still want to do that. But he was so sweet, and he was he seemed to be reasonably knowledgeable. I mean, um, He had a good concept of what was going on in his business. And while he didn't know the exact steps I needed to take to make sure that he was taken care of with the software, um, I needed to do a lot of work in the general ledger. He was aware. Uh, he was able to tell me things like, you know, these spreadsheets that I sent you, these are outside of the bank account. So I don't know what you need to do, but it's outside of the bank account. And this last number is what's settled to the bank account and I was like oh 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 okay that makes sense because I was trying to figure out how to you know I was like these numbers from his spreadsheets bear absolutely no relation to what's in the bank and when he explained that I thought well that makes sense you know um, so I, and I ended up being able to take care of what I thought was going to be a five hour long project in 15 minutes um, one of the expectations you should have of a bookkeeper is that they are able to accomplish your work in a reasonable length of time. And I don't mean in a timely manner. That's two different things. Um, for my clients, when I refer to in a timely manner, that means that they should be expecting their reports every Monday at 10 o'clock. They should be expect them to come in through email. If they're on the cloud, they should know that by Monday, Everything from the previous week is in. That's in a timely manner. When I mean they should be able to do it in a reasonable length of time, um, that means that they should know what they're doing well enough to be able to take an hour's worth of work and or what the client thinks is an hour's worth of work and do it in 15 to 20 minutes. Most of my clients... Um, that I work with that are on the basic system take me five to ten minutes a week every week and I have heard of another gal 
that took over one of my clients and I better not say that. Um, they need to be able to do the work in a short period of time. If it's taking a bookkeeper hours to do a basic, I mean, honestly, if, if you're on my system, if, I, if it takes me an hour to do your work, either I have a special arrangement with you, I have two clients that I work for on site, or I have, you've signed up for extra services. Um, invoicing, payables, receivables, um, additional services, extra accounts, you're doing a lot of commingling and both the client and I are aware of that. And so I'm telling them, I, I, tell, I tell them right off the bat, you know, well because you're chasing your money around different accounts and I'm having to track all of that, that's going to take longer. Um, And, and if you have a, a my accounts, and this is coming from people that have a lot more experience in accounting than I do, and those people are few and far between, my accounts are usually pretty close to pristine. If there's a problem with one of my accounts, with one of my clients, two, one of two things has happened. One is the client themselves is messy in the way they handle their, their finances that happens it happens all the time it's not a big deal but it makes things a little bit challenging when you're doing the bookkeeping i do have clients that do commingling um, and if you didn't see my video on commingling that is when you take personal funds to, to pay business bills you take business funds to pay personal bills and you're not supposed to do that you're supposed to pay business funds business bills with business funds personal expenses with personal funds and if you need to take money out of your business you should actually write yourself a check or transfer the money from your personal account to your business uh, from, other way around or the other way around from your business account to your personal account in the form of a paycheck or an owner's draw and then pay those bills out of your personal account that's the way you're supposed to do it um, maybe one client in ten actually does it that way and I've had some really good friends tell me that they didn't realize that that's how you were supposed to do it. Um, and then vice versa. I mean, if you're just starting up and you don't have your bank account open yet, it makes sense for you to pay business expenses from your personal account. But as soon as you get that business account open, you should actually reimburse yourself for the expenses that you paid with your personal funds. Um, if you make those, those larger transfers or withdrawals or, or write yourself a check um, you have it's documented for one thing it's documented um, you didn't just go to Nordstrom and spend a thousand dollars on your business account you took that thousand dollars you put it in your personal account and now nobody cares what you did with it um, but we'll go back to coming like another time that the problem with doing these videos is that I, I get it's hard to stay on topic for me um, it can be kind of a challenge. If, it, if it, your bookkeeper is taking hours to do one of your entities, you know, to do a business entity, um, then there is a problem. And the problem is either that you have jacked up your books so badly it is taking her forever to try to figure them out. And honestly, I haven't seen much of that. Or she doesn't really know what she's doing and she's trying to pretend she does. I have seen a lot of that. I have fixed a lot of that. You're, you know, as you're interviewing bookkeepers or talking to bookkeepers, um, that's just an expectation that should be set is that they should know what they're talking about. I always kind of go back to debits and credits. If you're talking to a bookkeeper and she starts talking about debits and credits, you should be able to tell from talking to her if she knows what she's talking about. Um, one way of telling is can she teach it? I am uh, meeting with a client tomorrow to teach them how to use QuickBooks. And I have no problem doing that because 
I know QuickBooks. Not only do I know QuickBooks, I know accounting. And so I can explain to them, he said something about the general journal, and I said, well, I don't typically use the general journal. I usually don't have to. I don't go back and like fix mistakes. I, I will fix them in the original transaction first, um, maybe with a, a note in the memo. But I prefer not to use the general ledger. Now, with that said, I can immediately, quickly, and usually without double checking, use the general ledger. Uh, that's what I was doing for this other client the other night. He had um, sales uh, sales that were coming in from an outside source, and he had fees that were coming out of that, but then I had already accounted for those sales, part of those sales, uh, in his bank account. So I was able to go into the general journal and you'll notice I'll say journal and ledger interchangeably. It's the same thing. Um, I was able to go into the general journal and just automatically, okay, well, I need to reduce his sales, so I credit that. I need to increase his expenses, so I debit those. And then I need to reduce his, I need to increase his sales, so I'm going to credit his sales. I need to increase his expenses, so I credit those, or debit those, excuse me. And then I need to decrease or offset his sales by this amount at the bottom because we've already accounted for this on another spot. So I credit or debited sales back. Well, now he's got correct books and I don't have to go back and double check to see if his merchant account fees are correct because I already know. Um, and if I do need to double check, it's really quick. That's the kind of thing you're looking for in a bookkeeper. She should be able to do Bookkeeping is basic accounting. She may not understand um, amortization. She may not be able to understand amortization tables. She may not be comfortable doing depreciation unless she has the schedule, uh, but she should be able to. Um, the one hiccup that I have typically is inventory. And if I have a client that starts talking about inventory, um, that's when I start backing off and telling them, I, I, and I will tell them point blank, I don't do inventory. Inventory control is a whole job, unless you have like six items and you have six of each of them. If you, you know, for a typical business, inventory control is a nightmare. And it requires someone to be on site and to be taking care of that every day to do it correctly. Um, I can attempt to do it through QuickBooks. I, I have yet to have a good outcome with that, so I don't like to do it. Um, I was just thinking back when I very first moved to Utah in, uh, when did I move here? 1999. <laughs> That's when I moved here. And one of my first jobs was at the Provo Airport, and I worked for a uh, FBO, which is fixed base operation, um, which meant that basically uh, there was a flight school involved and essentially a, a gas station for airplanes. So I had to keep track of the fuel. And I would keep track of the fuel. I mean, I, I tracked it properly in QuickBooks. And when it got to a certain level, I was supposed to order another load of fuel. And so I did. And I didn't, did not send someone out to double check and make sure that the tanks were as low as I thought they were. I just went ahead and ordered a load of fuel. That did not turn out well. It turned out that the tanks were much fuller than I thought because, again, that's inventory control. Someone physically needs to count that or put a stick in the tank and see you know, how many gallons are left. Um, and that's one of those things that I've never forgotten because it was, I mean, it was... I get anxiety about not doing a good job. <laughs> so it's one of those things that I've never forgotten because the anxiety level just went right through the roof. I felt like it was sinking through the floor because I knew I had accounted for everything correctly and I couldn't figure out why there was so much fuel in the tank when everything was accounted for. Well, it turned out the owner had ordered a load and it wasn't entered into QuickBooks. And I didn't know. So here I was ordering a second load when we didn't need it. Um, 
So that's one of the reasons I just absolutely despise doing inventory or inventory control or inventory track, anything to do with inventory other than telling you what your inventory is worth. Um, I can advise you on it, but I don't want to do it um, because I have a thing about doing my job as perfectly as possible. Um, so that's one of the expectations I'll set out right out the gate. I'm not an inventory person. If you want me to do depreciation, I can. If you want me to do amortization, I need to talk to your CPA, but I'm capable of doing it. I can do accounts payable, accounts receivable. I can manage your, I can track your money. I can even give you advice, which is going to be worth all of the zero dollars that you're going to pay me for it. Thoughts and ideas on how to bring more customers into your business. I can put you in contact with um, wonderful, wonderful business people. One of, uh, one of my favorites does, um, she's the queen of cards. She does merchant account systems. Or she sells merchant, or she sets up merchant accounts. That's what she does for a living. And I would trust her with any of my clients. And there's a couple of other people that, that are in the same business that I would also trust with my clients. So, um, getting the long way around, if I, if I know what your expectations are, I will actually expand on that in order to provide a better service to my customers, to my clients. I am huge on under-promising and over-delivering. So, I have had clients call me and or potential clients call me and ask, you know, how long does it take you to do that? And I almost always double the length of time that I think it's going to take me when I give them a quote, if it's an hourly thing. Um, then when it takes me half the time, you know, I look like a hero. If they, you know, if they say, well, I need this done in 12 weeks, can you do it in six? Oh, well, yeah, I can, uh, I think I can manage that. I can do it in two. Yeah. Um, that's not always the case, though. So kind of take me as I'm at my word. But I really like to, to under promise. So if I say, oh, it's the it's today's the 11th. I'll have that to you by. What am I thinking? Today's the 12th. I will have it to you by the end of the month. Well, then when I get it to you next week, then I look amazing. I also. Uh, the one thing I absolutely don't want to do is overpromise and underdeliver. So if I tell you uh, a certain time frame and it seems a little tight, I promise you, I already know I can do it. Um, again, it just kind of goes back to the setting the expectations. If I know what the client's expectations are, I can actually set time aside or make arrangements to to. to I don't want to overwhelm myself and I can I can manage my time if I know what the actual expectation of the client is. And I'm not referring to time expectations but results expectations because believe me I know how long it takes me to do uh, various projects. I've worked on enough clients <laughs> that I know. I think it's been um, I don't even think I want to say, but lots of clients and lots of different fields. So, you know, when I, when I tell people I really do know what I'm doing, I have experience doing everything. Um, but again, you know, if I know what the client's expectations are, I can arrange to make sure that I meet or exceed those expectations, and I prefer to exceed. Um, so, the takeaway on all of this rambling is make sure that you are very clear with your bookkeeper about what your expectations are as the client, how fast you need the work done, what kind of mode you are in your business. Are you in a growth mode? Do you need this information more often? Do you need more frequent uh, more frequent communication? Um, do you expect to have some sort of face-to-face -face meeting over um, video conference? Video conference is my personal favorite. 
or you know, in person on a regular basis to make sure your books are in line, or you know, if we know what your expectations are, we can meet them. Um, that is it for tonight. I could ramble on and on for hours, as I'm sure all of you already know. Um, I will look forward to talking to you tomorrow night. I'm hoping to find a way to do a splash screen on here. With eventually, someday, maybe I'll get a logo. But I would like to have a splash screen up here and kind of uh, make this a little bit more professional looking. Um, you guys have a wonderful Wednesday night. Um, I have got to take my monsters to their youth activities and find out how much more work I need to do for them. <coughs> Excuse me. My son is um, my son is a Star Scout and Boy Scouts, and I'm incredibly proud of him. My daughter earned her Civil Award in Girl Scouts, and she's very active in her in our churches. Um, both of them are very active in our churches' youth activities, and I am just so proud of them. I mean, I I can't even begin to tell you how proud I am of my kids. Uh, you guys have a wonderful evening, and I will talk to you tomorrow.